everything. One minute, you're having the time of your life. Other times, you wish could last forever. It can feel like time is standing still. There are good times, there are tough times, there is never enough time. Eventually, father time catches up to everyone. But in a New York minute, everything can change. One thing is certain, there is no time like the present. As we get ready for game six of this league championship series. Brad Peacock is getting set. Aaron Boone has kept his lineup pretty much intact. Typical look, DJ LeMayhew leads off. Aaron Judge bats second, Glaber Torres hits third. In the middle, it's Aaron Hicks. What a trip he's been on over the last week. Edwin Encarnacion is back in there. Didi Gregorius is the shortstop. Seven, eight, nine. Gary Sanchez, who has struggled. Gio Urshela, same for him. And Brett Gardner plays left and bats ninth. There's Brad Peacock. He gets the start tonight. So does Tom Verducci. We'll take it to you, Tom. Well, thanks, Joe. You know, the role that Brad Peacock will play tonight is not a long one, but it's huge. Keep DJ LeMayhew and Aaron Judge from creating the damage they did in the first inning last night in game number five. A.J. Hinch picked Peacock because he has a slow heartbeat and because he is so tough against right-handed hitters. As Hinch said, we need to get LeMayhew out. We've never seen a game like this. Dueling bullpens from start to finish with the American League pennant on the line. And the urgency begins right now. So here we go, Brad Peacock and DJ LeMayhew in that matchup that Tom just talked about. LeMayhew 8 for 21 in this LCS, hitting 381, went deep last night. A Verlander to tie it in the first. Strike one. So Peacock throws from the first base side of the rubber. Good two seam fastball change up slider. Working out of the stretch. Strike two. And the theme tonight to watch. The Yankees sit in the beginning of the series to get to this point. Have used their bullpen a lot. So green 53 pitches. The Astros have seen they've only seen eight pitches coming into this game against Peacock. There's still another guy that the Yankees haven't seen in the bullpen. So the bullpen for the Astros is more fresh. And the strikeout starts game six. And the man that A.J. Hinch wanted to face the red hot D.J. LeMayhew wins that battle. Brad Peacock. That was a great pitch, and LeMayhew has been awfully tough in this series. Here's Aaron Judge. His only home run of this series came in the start here against Justin Verlander. Here's ground ball left side. Down on a knee, picked up by Correa. Two down. Tell you what, Brad Peacock and Tom Verducci talked about it. That slow heartbeat, the moment is not too big. We were right there in 2017 when Brad had two tremendous outings out of the bullpen in the World Series for the world champion Astros. He had a big three and two third inning save in game three here against the Dodgers. And he pitched two innings on the road in game seven at Dodger Stadium. No runs, two strikeouts, and the five to one championship clinching win. Strike one on Torres. Slow heartbeat, simple mechanics, make pitches. And he knows he's in there for probably six hitters. Maybe goes through the lineup once. But his job is to get through the first inning in this game and let. His offense bat with a zero on the board. Torres would like to ruin those plans. Strike 
two. Here's a lineup for A.J. Hinch. Typical look at the top. Springer, Altuve, Brantley. In the middle, Alex Bregman, Yuli Gurriel, and Carlos Correa. And at the back end, the struggling D.H., the rookie, Ordon Alvarez, Martin Maldonado, and Josh Reddick. And here is Chad Green. Chad Green was the quote-unquote opener in 15 games during the regular season for the Yankees and the Yankees went 11 and 4 when he started the first inning. Springer jumping on the first pitch fouls it right side strike one or seen fastball and slider and Green probably if he's on could go a little bit farther than Peacock. The irony in this series the Yankees won their two games Tanaka pitched six innings zero earned runs Paxton six innings one earned run. They're trying to find a way to piece it together to get to game seven. Good pitch Woo! over the top breaking ball from Green and that's two quick strikes on Springer. Green is 28 years old 6'3", 215 born in South Carolina lives in Kentucky. Four and four overall during the regular season. We got the win in the clinching game three at Minnesota. Former 11th round draft pick of the Detroit Tigers in 2013 traded to the Yankees for the 2016 season. That's when he became a reliever. Good start for Green. A strikeout begins the bottom of the first. And Springer now four for 23 in this ALCS. 
That was a really good pitch. Springer loves hitting fastballs. Saw two sliders in that at bat. It'll bring in Altuve. Four home runs this postseason, one in this ALCS. And he loves postseason baseball here at home. Jumps on the first one and fouls it right side. LeMayhew watches it go one row deep. For coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune to Fox Deportes. Well, the Yankees' bullpen had four guys that appeared in 60 plus games. First team to do that, and Green was not too far behind. They could have had five with 60 plus. Seventh most innings in Major League Baseball, but they used 30 different relievers to spread that out. When we talked to Chad Green three days ago back in New York, you asked him if. He still thinks of himself as a starter if he wants to get back to the rotation. You can tell that's in his mind, but he's happy with the role he's in, and he gets the ball here in the first inning of game six. The 1 1. That's down the right field line foul. That's strike two. Two pitch. The Astros here tonight are trying to win their third pennant overall. Their second American League pennant. They came to the AL in 2013. They got to the World Series and won it all two years ago with A.J. Hinch. They set a franchise record this season with 107 wins, 64 total wins now, including the postseason here in their home park. Since 1969, that's the fourth best winning percentage at home. Here's one into left center. Well hit back to the track, to the wall. Altuve has a one out double. Well, he stayed on this breaking ball, and the breaking ball stayed on the plate. That's the difference. Altuve is such a good hitter in the strike zone. He'll get to uh, just about everything off the plate. But there you see he split the outfielders in an easy double and a good start already for the Astros. Hard to believe yesterday's game. All the scoring was in the first inning. The Astros jumped onto a one nothing lead and then after the first inning the Yankees completely shut this offense down. Michael Brantley. RBI chance here in the first inning. Six for 21 RBI in this LCS. Talked about Altuve and what he's done here at home in his postseason career. A 1 1 2 6 OPS. That is the fifth best all time during postseason play with a hitter at home. And he adds to it. That's a strike one ball one strike. Well as good as the Yankees bullpen is and it is very good. They've had to be used a lot and the more you get to see these guys it takes away a little bit of that leverage that they had because in a regular three game, three or four game series they wouldn't see green this many times they wouldn't see 60 or 70 pitches more than likely. So that's the one upside for the Astros having seen so much of the Yankees bullpen. That's down into the corner hooking foul. Not to mention the late life that makes green so good just gets a little bit less late life because you're pushed 
to throw a lot more often and get up and down in a game now where the Yankees are to go ahead and come back and win this series they will have had to play four games in a row with that bullpen usage. See that number four for thirty nine a one oh three average with runners in scoring position in this LCS for the Astros have had chances they have not cashed in one two pitch out of play. Home plate umpire is Marvin Hudson with the crew chief Mike Everett at first. Corey Blazer out at second base. Kerwin Danley is at third. Dan Bellino and Mark Carlson in the outfield on each line. And Bill Welke is the replay official back in New York. One ball, two strikes on Brantley. The first year Astro takes down two and two. You know the heartbeat of a player is talked about a lot and it, it's rightfully so. I mean some have a slow one some have an accelerated one. I got to believe I wish I could gauge what the heartbeat of each manager is in a game like this where you're not really depending on one guy to give you the bulk of the innings you're trying to use your eyes and information to decide who you go to next when do you get them up when do you bring them in. Skied into center and that should be easy for Hicks to his right. Two out. And this will fall into the lap. The guy they chant MVP for here in Houston Alex Bregman. Well the Yankees in the postseason have had a great game game plan and they have really limited the success of Bregman. Everybody else has not. He's hitting 270 with seven home runs and 23 runs against everybody else but the Yankees. So they have done a nice job making him the X factor. In other words, they're Xing him out of trying to let him get going. Most dangerous hitter in the American League from the 1st of August through the end of the year. And overall hit 41 home runs, third highest total in the American League. It's a big run sitting out there for Houston, up three games to two in this LCS. Trying to get a first inning lead on a bullpen game. This should be a decent matchup for him against Green. He loves high fastballs. But he prefers the fastballs to be middle to end towards him. The Yankees have been throwing a lot of fastballs up and away and letting Bregman get himself out that way. A lot of room on the right side of the infield with Glaber Torres just about up the middle. Ninety seven but it missed ball one. Brad Peacock in the first inning John threw seven pitches all strikes. He's thrown 15 pitches 14 of the 15. Over the last two innings he's worked his only two innings have been strikes he don't want to sit down. He's just pacing. Good scoop albeit looked like with a backhand by Sanchez in the count two and oh. I was getting ready to say you really trust the process and the information with the shift on and a runner in scoring position. And Bregman at the plate you know that he is primarily a pull hitter a pull hitter with power. And you're almost baiting him to try and go through that vacated second base position. Whoa. Three and oh. That would be flirt with him right here with the base open. I just go ahead and put that last one on, but they're going to try to. See if he can go fishing on a 3 0 pitch, maybe. Mistake. Bregman will jump on it. Hey. Willing to take on 3 0, hit the outside part, 3 1. A 
Altuve at second. He was there with one out. He's there with two out. Julie Gurriel, who is one for 20 in this ALCS, but you've talked about it. AJ Hinch talked about it with us. Of all the guys in this lineup, he likes the at bats, the swings, the selection that Yuli Gurriel has had. The results just haven't been there. Yeah, he's hit a lot of balls on the button and right at people, and that. 0 50 usually looks pretty bad but it's a scary 0 0 50 batting average if you ask me and the approach he's had at the plate. And he's another guy that loves hitting here at Minute Maid Park since the first of July he's driven in 44 runs in this stadium. Number two across all of baseball. Anthony Rendon is in that top spot and we will see him we'll see the Nationals in the World Series starting on Tuesday night Jay Happ the lefty gets loose two on two out out to base wiping third this one in the left it is gone. Take a three to nothing. Game six, first inning lead. Gurriel breaks out. Frustration for Yuli Gurriel sailed over that wall and left on that baseball. And the Astros lead game six. Correa, strike one. Last night it was Aaron Hicks with a three run shot in the bottom of the first inning. For the Yankees tonight, it's Yuli Gurriel. Left side. Urshela makes the play. Big damage done. Double by Altuve. Two out walk to Bregman. Followed by a trot by Yuli Gurriel. Crawford boxes and left. Hello. Brad Peacock and the Houston Astros lead 3-0.
that pitch Altuve was stealing third. And Chad Green gives up the three run home run three nothing Astros after one here's Aaron Hicks against Brad Peacock and a rare pitch out of the strike zone from the 31 year old right hander Peacock who two times was on the injured list this year with shoulder issues. He's not on the division series roster added for the LCS and here he is. Guriel. One away. Well, the last three games, it's amazing. The three run homer has been the story. The ALCS on FS1 is sponsored by Indeed, the world's number one job site. By T Mobile, their newest, most powerful signal is here. And by Steal a Base, Steal a Taco, only at Taco Bell. Well, in all the postseason, the first inning's been the highest run producing inning in baseball. It's been a rare, we've seen some crazy stuff in the first innings. And it started already in a very important game six. That was the 10th run in this series scored in the first inning. That, by the way, is the most of any inning in this series. And it's the Astros that get runs eight, nine, and ten. On one swing, there's a strike to Edwin Encarnacion back as the DH. Last night it was Giancarlo Stanton who's bothered by a quad pull. And with the late arrival or early morning arrival, Aaron Boone decided they're not going to push it. They're going to get Encarnacion back in there, try to get him going. He thinks Edwin's going to get back on track. So far, one for 15 in this series. Ball and two strikes. How about Peacock? Five up, five down, two strikeouts. Looks like he's been in a groove for the last two months. He hasn't pitched much. The injuries costing him starting probably a lot more, but he has come out of the gates with everything working, and that's what you're hoping for. Every manager doesn't want to have to. Try to make early decisions on what he hopes each guy that comes in will be on their game. Gregorius now with the bases empty, two down. Peacock has great numbers against the hitters that are in the Yankee lineup in this game. And on July 21st, in his second to last regular season start at Yankee Stadium. Peacock went six, allowed two runs, five hits, struck out 11. That is outside, maybe down as well. And the count 2 0 on Gregorius. The guys that Aaron Boone has in his lineup in this game six combined 11 for 47. Lifetime against the 31 year old right hander. 3 0 the count. With Gary Sanchez, who hit a tape measure home run off Peacock in that June 21st start on deck. And we documented it early six through nine for the Yankees, only hitting 113. Gregorius takes a strike. Didi's one of those guys that can get hot. He got hot against Minnesota, but Minnesota happened to be his uh, favorite team to. Hit against the last two years. That is a rocket down into the corner. Gregorius will dig for two. Throw by Reddick is late. It's a two out double. And an opportunity now for the Yankees here in the second, down by three. Here comes Gary Sanchez. And we flash back. Statcast powered by AWS. This matchup back in June. How far did it go? 481 feet. Longest Yankee home run this season. It left at over 113 miles per hour. 
and the longest one of their 306 that their team put together in 2019. And just in case if you think pitchers forget about that they don't but while in New York they showed that quite a bit so they were reminded of it. Here's one in the center. Gregorius is coming to the plate. There will be no throw by Springer. The Yankees are on the board. Sanchez comes through. It's three to one. A double a single two run ball game. And that was unbelievably close to Peacock right back up the middle. Talked about these guys struggling. And that one was sizzled up the middle to score a big run with two outs. I don't believe there's been a two out run in this series until right there. So with the inning continuing here's her shell a tying run at the plate and the ball down and away and the Astros bullpen is busy the Yankees bullpen is busy and we will say that a lot here tonight as the hard throwing right hander Josh James gets loose. Urshela could tie this game with one swing. Caught the corner a ball and a strike. Part of the problem at the bottom of the order at the end of a regular season that was phenomenal for Urshela 314 21 home runs. Do you think the Yankees saw the open 69 hitters. I'm going to say they probably ignored it. <laughs> they did. <laughs> That's what we came on talking about. Bottom of the order struggling for each side. Sanchez cracked one right back up the middle. Two and two. Hard to believe this is the second postseason series ever with a three run home run in the first inning in back to back games. Yeah, they're rare. I mean, three run homers in the postseason when you're facing some top notch pitching is rare. And they've all really come here in the last three games. Last time it happened, the 32 World Series, 1932. 2 2 pitch is fouled away. Because really, home runs are king, right? But usually they come in the solo variety, and that's what the highest percentage had come into the series. Most of them had been hit of the solo variety. And those three run homers are daggers. I mean, they are just tough to come back from. And the Astros got two in their win, and the Yankees got one in the first inning in their win yesterday. Urshela trying to find a pitch to drive. And Martin Maldonado will trot out to talk to Peacock. I gave it to you verbally, but here it is now updated. And what this lineup has done career wise against Brad Peacock. Sanchez now. The two guys that have really been the only two that have hit him have gone double single for a run here in the second inning. Two two. Check swing foul. I believe Pe Peacock will be given to Gardner and that'll be it. With James getting loose. That is in front of the plate. 
near it. And Sanchez not willing to push it and end this threat by running into an out. We saw James there, and I could look at his eyes and the anxiety of that heartbeat as we see this ball in the dirt. Maldonado gets in front of it and loses track of it for a minute. But that heart rate, when you're getting ready to come in, no matter when it is, in this case it would be in the second inning, it's probably at its highest level to make sure you're ready. Runner will go, 3 2 pitch. Breaking ball misses, two on, two out. And that'll be it. We'll get one more batter. So Brad Peacock retired the first five. Gregorius rocketed a ball into right for a double. RBI single by Sanchez. Now the first walk is the end of the game for Brad Peacock. James will enter. Brett Gardner coming up. Well, early drama. Three run home run for the Astros and Yuli Guriel. A run here in the second. It's a two run game. The tying runs are on. And here comes Brett Gardner coming off a career offensive year, especially with the home run. He hit 28, new career high at the age of 36. And here's Josh James taking over in the second inning. Flamethrower. 98 99. Gardner prefers to hit a fastball. Well, sixth, seventh, and eighth all reach base for the Yankees. Can Gardner get another big two out hit? Aaron Boone has called him the heart and soul of this club. He could really deliver here. And his team facing elimination, trying to force a game seven tomorrow night. Strike one. James came in, a 6 1 lead. Lost a little command of the fastball, and Sanchez hit a two run homer, and then he settled down. Electric arm. It was a couple of nights ago in game number four at Yankee Stadium. That's high. A ball and strike at 98. The two starters. And you get the feeling the guy on the left is finished as well. Time will tell on that. Right now it's two on, two out. A strike into Gardner, strike two.
Now yeah, this one was going to be impossible to hit just off the plate that gets the call. Gardner likes it middle half. There's no doubt about that. But 98 in. Locked him up. This point after a really long night getting in late adrenaline works well early on it's as the game goes on will there be any fatigue factor for anybody of course losing that travel day meant that everyone had a short day today traveling after the game getting in late and trying to hurry up and sleep. Down by two after one and a half in game six. Don Alvarez taking on the new pitcher for the Yankees, Jay Happ, who fires a strike. The lefty takes over after Chad Green went one, allowed three runs on two hits, the three run home run. One walk, one strikeout. Happ finished the season pitching really well. 
has worked out of the pen so far in the postseason as he misses with ball one. Well, the Astros got their first two out runs in the first inning, that three run homer you were talking about, and now it's their seven, eight, nine chance to get something going. You see the numbers one for 19. Mechanically, he's out of sync. Cap deals. And slicing foul. Strike two. Brett Gardner, who just looked at that ball head into the seats, had uh, good reason to be upset with how he was called out. Yeah, the first pitch was real good. Then he gets a call on the inside part of the plate, which you can deal with as a hitter, but it's hard to have that inside part and outside off the plate. Impossible to cover. And Gardner will probably let him know the next time he goes to the plate where that pitch was. There was a charter that left last night after game five out of the New York area that these umpires were on a lot of our Fox crew was on it. It was going to take off late anyway meaning in the early morning hours. Two balls two strikes to Jordan Alvarez. That's to the right side Torres grabs it. They started down the runway the pilot. Stops the plane, gets on the PA system, and says, Well, I've never had that many red lights come on in a cockpit when I was about to take off in my career. So they went back, parked the plane, fixed it, and that charter that carried the umpires and a lot of personnel on it, and baseball and our network landed at 10:57 this morning Central Time. So these umpires, along with men and women on our crew, are not working with a lot of sleep. And by the way, that falls into the category of things I never want to hear a pilot say. <laughs> Thanks. There's issues of sleep. So kudos to everybody, umpires. TV personnel, anybody that was on that flight, or really any of them. Yankees and Astros got here in the early morning as well. Working hard to bring you game six. Still able to smile. The one out and nobody on. Martin Maldonado waits for the 0 2. And then this is inside, ball one. Well, AJ, I should say, J. Happ had a really, really good September. He struggled along with the starters the Yankees had, but the September he got on a roll and fixed a few things. That's off the end of that. Prior to September, had an ERA of just over five and a half. From September 1st on, 1.86. And over nine strikeouts per nine innings, and happy 37 to Jay Happ. Oldest pitcher to appear in an LCS game on his birthday. The 37 year old deals, and that bounces in two and two. Next outside Jay came up with Philly in 07 it was a part of a championship in 08 worked eight games made four starts that year but then really established himself in the big leagues in 09 the Philadelphia Phillies team that got back to the World Series but lost to the Yankees. Three two pitch is hit hard at Urshela. Two down. Fastball command. When he started getting better fastball command, that's when that September run he went on. He doesn't throw 95, but he has a quick fastball the way he delivers, and then a good changeup. Of course, off speed pitch to 
accompany that. It'll bring in Josh Reddick. He homered in game three at Yankee Stadium. Strike one. Who will be the star in game six? Which team will he play for? Right now it's Yuli Gurriel. A three run first inning home run. Long way to go in this one. Strike two. Long way to go and a lot of decisions to make. Reddick didn't start either game one or game two here in Houston. Got the start in game three and then popped one into the seats in right. In the second. One, two. Fouled back here. I mean, the Yankees don't care how they win this game. I mean, they're they're behind the eight ball to speak they just got to get to a game seven of course what's waiting for him in game seven is Garrett Cole so the strategy of the managers the luxury is going to be to A.J. Hinch because he can really truly empty his bullpen because you've got one of the most dominant starters waiting in the wings if they trip up and lose game six. Well, the Yankees will earn it. If they become the fifth team in LCS history to win game six and seven on the road. They'd have to win here and then they'd have to win a game started by Garrett Cole who's three and oh this postseason. Last team to do that in LCS play the 0 4 Red Sox. To win six and seven on the road another foul by Reddick. And then they went on to a four game sweep over St. Louis to win their first. World championship in 86 years. One, two, reaching for it. Couple of hops. Torres takes care of it, and that sends game number six into the third inning. Top of the order coming up. That means DJ LeMayhew for the Yankees as they trail by two.
interesting uh, conversation while the Astros were batting a moment ago between Brent Strom and Josh James who goes back out there he finished off the top of the second with a strikeout of Gardner. Two and zero. Oh. Well, little reminders because your pitching coach is going to watch everything you do and knows your mannerisms. He wants them to get the glove back to the same spot every single time and not deviate or change because hitters are looking for everything they can to pick up anything. I know the guy throws 98, but his off-speed pitches are pretty good too. Don't give the hitter any advantage by tipping what's coming. And just to clarify or go maybe to the next level with that. It's where a pitcher will hold his glove right. that a bench or a hitter will pick up that let's say they hold the glove lower that means change up higher that means fastball whatever it might be and Correct. that's what the Astros may have seen with their own right hand. Yeah. There's definitely things you do within your glove. Because every grip's different that's why you'll see some guys will hold the ball outside the behind them before they put the ball in the glove and then change the grip. But to this point you need everything to be the same because it's so easy to do just something a little bit different when the hitter gains an advantage. And you're typically unaware you're doing absolutely. That's why you need people on your bench looking for certain things. 2 2. Two hops to Altuve. One out. Ken Rosenthal, pretty interesting story in the uh, young career of Josh James. It is, Joe. Former 34th round pick. He signed for $15,000, and he was only an average prospect until 2018. That's when his velocity took a sudden jump. During spring training first minor league game on a backfield an Astros official put his radar gun on James and saw 98 miles per hour he was stunned. He said maybe I need to recalibrate my gun second pitch 99 turned out James was benefiting finally from the diagnosis of sleep apnea. He had started to wear a breathing mask and this all got started when his former minor league roommate pitcher named Ryan Thompson said man you snore too loud go see a doctor. So getting more rest deep sleep and now he can light up a radar gun 1 0 pitch that lights it up at 99 but it's high to Aaron Judge in the count 2 and 0 as it was on DJ LeMahieu to start this inning. James his 13th pitch three balls no strikes with labor Torres next swinging on three and oh and it's three and one well, hoping to get the point on the board a lot of this damage goes to center and right center when judge is right He's made so much improvement since 2017 in the postseason struck out 27 times way down on that strikeout total and way down on the knob of the bat Waiting for a 3 1. Full count. It was low. And here comes Glaber Torres, who had an unbelievable night here a week ago in game one. 
The 22 year old had a five RBI game an RBI double a homer a two run single and an RBI ground out. There are the overall numbers 286 two home runs six RBIs. In this LCS. He has been so good but it's hard to believe that one at bat bases loaded one out. In game four. Down by two. And that's when AJ called the bullpen in to get strikeout strikeout. Ended that little threat in the. Astros went on to win that game but if you're a Yankee fan there's no other person you would have wanted up there besides him maybe LeMahieu. And they've just called a balk. And now they're going to send him back. It's home plate umpire called time. Home plate umpire called time. The first base umpire didn't see that. And so he sent Judge down to second but time had been called so there is no balk. Lynch initially a balk. Here's the next. It's down, and the count is 2 0. He's been behind each of the three hitters he's faced in this inning. Came back to get LeMayhew, walk Judge. The dangerous Glaber Torres waiting for a 2 0. Just overthrew that changeup at 91. It's good separation still, but 91 to 99 miles an hour between those two pitches. Torres. Takes a strike. <laughs> Labor has eight extra base hits this postseason. Most across baseball. This October that's strike two. That's where you have to pitch Torres. That is where I, I got to make him if you're pitching to him I got to make him beat me to right field. He's so good at opening up and pulling with power. The pitch middle to middle in that if you can dot the outside corner up. It's very difficult for him to do. Much with that pitch. Now Torres with two strikes changes up a bit trusts his hands to get the bat on the ball as he waits for a mistake the count stays two and two. No activity at either bullpen at the moment. It's a full count. The power distribution for Torres is pretty good. Upper part of the zone, he is hit 10 home runs, middle 13, lower part 12. And he's had eight multiple homer games, which tops Major League Baseball this year and on the top of the Yankees all time. Guide foul back behind home plate. Kind of surprised that Judge is staying there with a 3 2 count with the way that Torres kind of handles the bat with two strikes and the way he battles. James is kind of slow to plate, but he makes up for it with 99. He was not going on that first 3 2 pitch. Starts and stops, and here is a base hit into left center field. Judge will turn but hold, and it's first and second one out here in the third. And that'll bring in Aaron Hicks. 
Waver Torres getting a base hit into left center field. That's hit number seven of this LCS. You see what I'm talking about? See how where that pitch was? That's the first move he opens up and he can get to that pitch. And he gets rewarded if they're able to get the ball away from him. That doesn't happen. That's what makes this guy special. Only really one area up and away that presents problems for him. Action now is Presley, the right-hander, gets loose. Think of how far Aaron Hicks has come. And thinking his season was over in the first week of August, facing elbow surgery, not on the division series roster, added. We were in Aaron Boone's office before game one. How do you think you're going to use Aaron Hicks? Well, I don't want him to come right out and get thrown right into the lineup. We'll see. Maybe by the end he's back in the lineup. Well, he hit a three run home run last night that was huge for the Yankees in their four to one win. And now he's batting cleanup in game six. You could definitely say he's the reason the Yankees are here. That is hit down toward the end of the bat. Full swing. Doesn't go far. Reddick with a catch and the throw to him. And Hicks just missed that. The player resume is sponsored by Indeed. The DH spot in each lineup. Well, total of two hits. That's amazing. I mean, in American League, you just don't see that. That that's a strong position for each team, and they have virtually gotten nothing from that position. And there's just no way you could have predicted that coming into the series. And Carnacion, DH, trying to change that ball one. He struck out his first time. Now one for 16. I mean that's the it's the lowest OPS in the history of the ALCS history. Pitch was up at 98 and Carnacion fouls it straight back. Came from Seattle along with some cash on the 15th of June in exchange for a right handed pitcher a minor leaguer he ended up hitting 249 in 44 games for the Yankees and 13 of his 34 home runs as Brian Cashman kept adding and they used everybody 30 players went to the injured list. A Major League Baseball record and they plowed on to 103 wins but they're down three games to two they're down three to one in game six and now two strikes on Encarnacion. Overthrowing his changeup and overthrowing his slider, and you can understand the adrenaline this young man has. Bullpen's going, and AJ's hoping he doesn't have to make another trip out there till the next inning or beyond. Big spot for Encarnacion and the Yankees. Give the runners a head start. Judge from second, Torres from first.
And Cardacion trying to deliver his first RBIs of this ALCS. Bases loaded. A.J. Hinch out of the dugout. Presley is coming in. James is coming out. As the turnstile clicks again, here comes 55. Tight spot, third inning. Seventh postseason game in which either starting pitcher went two full innings. Kind of expected that. Yuli Gurriel with a three run shot in the first inning. Gary Sanchez has the only Yankee RBI, but here comes Ryan Presley. Bases loaded. DD Gregorius digging in. Well, you could say that Presley had the biggest moment for the Astros if they go on to win this ALCS, and he's in another big moment. Although with two outs he came in in the fifth inning with one out in a similar situation. Slow chopper Presley off the mound he will tag Gregorius and Presley who's been bothered by a bad knee may have injured himself going to get that grounder three one after two and a half we'll check on Presley.
up by two. Jay Happ back to work. And a ball misses outside. We'll show you what happened with Ryan Presley a moment ago. Doesn't look good. He missed almost two full months after having arthroscopic surgery on his right knee. He'd been dealing with fluid and inflammation in that knee even to this point in the postseason. And going off that chopper hit by Gregorius. Last step he took. Looked like that right knee was injured and now the right hander we haven't seen yet in this LCS Jose or gets ready. Counts gone to three and zero from half the Springer. Yeah unfortunately he sure didn't look stable when he got to that ball and he knew he was going to tag Gregorius and that's unfortunate he's come up with two huge moments for the Astros prevented some big time potential rallies for the Yankees. 3 0 to Springer is fouled back. Well, Springer back in 2017 in the postseason was struggling. Bad. He was 3 for 30 with 11 Ks. And since the World Series game two, he has not been bad to the average of 440 with five home runs. And I'll never forget. The conversation we had with A.J. Hint saying all he needs to do is have a good walk or a good take. He did it and he's been a different player since. It was the MVP of that World Series against the Dodgers. Here's first of all the breaking ball. He gets a huge out with the bases loaded and then you see that right leg just hanging. Yeah right on this plant right there and he had surgery on that knee was out almost two months and gave the signal right away that he was done. You can see the frustration. He walked straight down in the tunnel. Altuve. Ball one from half. Altuve with a one out double in the first inning now is a 12 game hitting streak alive at home in the postseason. Tied for fourth longest in the American League all time. Records held by Darren Erstad of the Angels with 16. Hey. Good frame by Sanchez, a ball and a strike. Got to get Altuve out down. Weaker contact down than up in the zone. For a smaller guy, he loves the ball up. And that's where his power comes from. He's feasted at this ballpark in the postseason. And you can just tell everything about him loves playing the game, one, but loves playing the game at the highest level. This game takes all sizes and shapes. Altuve, 5'6, 168. Gets under it and flies it into shallow right, just beyond the infield, and Torres has it one on, one out. And the guy who was coming in from right, Aaron Judge, is 6'7, 280. Those are the extremes in the big leagues. A lot of people <laughs> fall in between those two. And I love this. There's the size difference. This is my favorite absolute portrait of two superstars that do it a different way. And the top two guys in the MVP race in the American League back in 2017 that was won by Altuve. Judge had to settle for rookie of the year with his 52 home runs. Here's Brantley. Strike one. So far, so good for Hap. Don't know if he'll still be in the game to face Bregman. As the bullpen is going, and we'll be going the rest of the night for the Yankees. That's Sessa. On 
the inside corner perfect pitch from Hap nothing and two. Brantley coming into this series uh, third best contact rate over 90 percent just a little bit over 90 percent of putting baseballs in play and that says a lot for a guy that came over here and fits the model of what they were wanting in this lineup contact little power no strikeouts outside. Looking like he was just about timing what Hap had done. He hadn't thrown over there yet. And well, he did and almost got caught. One, two. Torres has only one play. Down to second is Springer, two up. Alex Bregman looking into the Yankee dugout to see if Aaron Boone is going to make a pitching change and the only person coming out of the dugout so far has been the bat boy. I think Bregman like you was expecting Sessa to come into the ball game, but instead it's Hap and Bregman with a base open and reverse splits on Guriel. Meaning he hits much better off of right handers than he does left handers. Springer at second, two out, no pitching change, and it's Hap and Bregman battling. trying to manage along with the opposing manager and Bregman waited for a moment after that ground out looked at the Yankee dugout didn't see Aaron Boone so here he is Veteran pitcher that he could pitch him uh, maybe an unintentional out of the zone and end up walking him anyways, but I just think it's a big risk. And I understand Gary L had a three run homer, but that was off a right handed pitcher. 2 0. There's a strike. <laughs> First, I think Bregman thought there was going to be a pitching change. Then Hap falls behind him 2 0. Oh. He's probably thinking, well, they're going to pitch around me. Then Hap fires a strike to make it 2 and 1. He's been super patient, has Bregman, and has not statistically delivered to this point. Now it's 2 and 2. But he's gotten on base. He'll take the base, he'll pass the baton on. To the next guy. Took a walk with those two outs, which led to that three run homer for his teammate on deck. I think that's one of the most underrated things when the postseason comes around is we don't value 
what little things guys do that leads to big things. No RBIs in this series just three this postseason for Bregman who is typically a run producing machine. Full count. From what I've seen this series you're wasting your time trying to throw a ball above the zone. I know they've been trying to do it. He has not shown the ability to expand up there. And all you do is end up bringing in the mistake that that pitch doesn't quite get up there. And he can lose it over the seats. Three two. Ground ball. Torres. Good job by Hap. Gets around the leadoff walk by getting Altuve, Brantley, and now Bregman. Still three to one after three in game six. As the Astros have to go to their fourth pitcher. Didn't want to do it this early, but it looked like, and we're speculating, probably not a great idea, but it certainly looked like Ryan Presley re injured that right knee. And here is Jose Urquidy. Nine games in the big leagues, and he runs that one inside for a ball to Gary Sanchez. Sanchez, then Urshela, then Gardner against a young right hander. Fastball changeup slider, curveball. And it's the increased usage of his slider where he started to turn his year around. Pre September 5.87 ERA. Post September 1.37 ERA. That skips in two and one. He's 24 years old. Had a nine game showing in the big leagues. 40 strikeouts, seven walks. Two and one record ERA 
That's on the inside corner at 95, and the count evens two and two. Yeah, the way he throws over the top, it's kind of sneaky fast, right? I mean, I saw it at 95 miles an hour. You would think, well, that speaks for itself. But how he comes over with that quick arm action and gets down through his legs, kind of hops there at the end on the finish. Urquidy strikes out Sanchez to start the fourth. Here's this over the top delivery and great weight transfer when he let's see how the extension of that ball comes off of his fingers. And just explodes. Inside to Sanchez and a little bit of hot finish. We'll bring in Urshela walked his first time that chased. The starter Peacock here's one into right center field back at the wall it is gone. Urshela has made this a one run game with his second home run of this postseason. He's definitely aggressive early and he takes the fastball velocity. Doesn't try to do too much. Pitches away, hits it away. Right over the top. Not a horrible pitch. Many of the home runs that are hit in the league usually are middle, middle, or right on mislocation. Breaking ball misses to Gardner. Gardner struck out. Against Josh James, his first time up with the bases loaded. Two and zero. Oh. Talked about the six through nine hitters. The bottom of the order that had struggled coming into this game six has both RBIs for the Yankees. They've been all over the bases. Gardner takes ball three. And that's huge for the Yankees again they're going to have to do it a different way if they were going to win three games in a row down three to one offensively <laughs> offensively they were just going to have to be that much better than the Houston Astros teams that come back from three games to one usually usually will out pitch the other team in their quest to come back from that deficit. 3 1 pitch. Gardner hits one down the line. If it's fair, it's tied. It is foul. As it took a dive to the right of the pole down the line. Wow. Fans are telling me that was foul. <laughs> The extra umpires right there, and that's probably a couple feet. That's all it is right there. We saw Hicks hit the foul pole, and a little anxiety there, hoping that was going to be the second one they saw. Off his career high 28 during the regular season, has one in the postseason as Gardner came close to number two in a tie game. Fights it off. All his home runs are basically pulled. That's where his power is, and that's where he's just selling out. He'll fight the pitch away and kind of sometimes serve it to left field. But this year he's been more power driven. And he goes the other way for a big set. Tying run is on here in the fourth inning. A homer, then a single, and now back to the top of the order in the dangerous DJ LeMay here. See, I think that's when Gardner's at his best. I really do. I know the game has changed, and he has gotten the power, the best power of numbers he's ever had. But when he's doing that, because they shift on him, there's no way to defend it. So he looks middle in and then just drops the barrel of the bat. If he doesn't get it, that's what he used to be so good at. And the Yankees right now six through nine is rolling. 
A.J. Hinch trying to find somebody to get this game into the late innings when he can get a couple of trusted relievers into the ball game. Here's a swing and a miss by LeMay here. They love Will Harris and their closer Roberto Osuna. Joe Smith could be on that short list. He's going to have to ride with Urquidy here in the middle innings. Nobody up for Houston in their pen. Dying run is on. Strike two on LeMayhew. LeMayhew, much like Brantley, such a plate discipline. Understands the strike zone, and he's going to tell the umpire, nope, that's off. But he's not going to panic with two strikes because he's such a great hitter with two strikes. Back out there, you would think. Mayhew's good at taking it into right. He does go back out there and misses for ball one. The short time Rakiti's been in the big leagues, including the postseason, right handers have hit over 300 against him. Lefties under 200. High fly ball into center. Back is Springer. Two down. Into one of the deepest parts of the park. And back to first is Gardner. Well, better be really good with his breaking balls here against Judge. Judge looks a lot better. In his takes and his approach. There are the numbers with the opponent's average against this 24 year old right hander. And the one thing Judge doesn't like off of right handers is a right handed changeup. Where he's got to put a slider. Rochella has made this a one run game with his opposite field poke here in the fourth. Runner at first, two out. Judge. Strike two. All right, here's the key two for two on throwing great sliders. Can he make a third one? Sometimes you feel like as a pitcher, you got to make your third one even better. You don't. Just throw it right there. Easier said than done under these circumstances. Tons of swings and misses for Judge off the plate on that pitch. Urquidy gives up one, strikes out two. 3 2 Houston after three and a half.
three nothing. And now Luis Sessa is the third pitcher of the game for New York. Yuli Gurriel what? popped the three run home run back in the first takes a strike here. Sessa for the first time in his young career spent the entire season at the big league level. Good pitch called ball one one ball one strike. Well, he saw a slider and he saw his fastball. I mean the Yankees bullpen known for their velocity and their ability to strike you out. One one. Oh. You saw that stat Guriel the first player ever to hit three run home runs in three consecutive postseasons. Game five of the World Series off Kershaw in 2017. Last year, a three run shot off Brandon Workman of the Red Sox in game one of the ALCS. Now the count three and one. The Yankees came into this postseason three short of the record for strikeouts on their franchise record. They had struck out 750 guys. Over 26% of hitters went down via the K. Dangerous pitch here and a foul tip. Runs the count full. You saw the left hander Tyler Lyons getting loose with Jordan Alvarez in the hole. Guriel on three and two. Chops one to third. Top play, long throw. Got him on a play by Urshela. He has really played a great defensive third base in this ALCS. I mean, he's as good as it gets. When you think about household names that are over there, this guy, all he does is do everything you want with the glove, and now he's done so much more with his bat, which is just a bonus for the Yankees. I think the gold standard these days in the big leagues is Nolan Arenado. With a close uh, Matt Chapman at his heels. Absolutely. And Urshel is making all the plays those guys make. With one out, here's Correa. Strike one. Well, that last at bat about Judge, this was as good of a job you can do. Slider. And slider. And I mentioned the changeup, and he had the guts to throw it on two strikes. This pitch is filthy, and what a gutsy pitch to Aaron Judge to end that possible threat. Strike two now on Correa. Almost looks like he turns that changeup over a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that that is just classic. I mean when you see the information and you know what guys hit and don't hit it's one thing to be able to under the gun with two strikes be able to make that pitch and he did. Whoop. Sanchez nodding his head as he received that pitch low he liked Sessa being able to hit his spot Correa laid off and it's one and two. Two and two. Sessa has one of those disappearing sliders when it's good. It starts at the top of the zone and just goes straight down. But then he backs it up with that fastball out of the same slot. Coming right at you. It was 0 and 2, now it's 3 and 2. See if they go to a 3 2 slider here. Alvarez on deck. The 27 year old right hander brings it. Left side, Gregorius stays down on it. It's the out. And with Alvarez coming up. A reminder T-Mobile is introducing its newest most powerful signal ever. No signal goes further. No signal is more reliable whether you're home or away. T-Mobile is with you. The 
In steps Jordan Alvarez, who is one for 20, which is what Guriel was when he stepped in and popped a three run home run in the first. You almost feel like he, uh, I mean, to say he's due, he's due, but this is one of those matchups where you wonder if he gets clicking a little bit. Strike one. Talking to A.J. Hinch about Alvarez, the 22-year-old Cuban-born star with 27 home runs in the regular season. He said it's a mechanical issue. It's not the moments are too big. It's mechanical, not emotional for Jordan Alvarez. So the backside is collapsing. Yeah, which gets the swing too long. And when the swing's too long and the game plan for the Yankees has been pounding them in with fastballs, they've done a great job and they only made one mistake, and that was Britton the other day, and he got an out on it. But when the swing gets long and the mechanics are off, it's going to make 96 seem like 100. And it's going to seem like breaking balls are dropping farther than they are. Two quick strikes on Alvarez. Sure, if this guy has ever struggled, he's been so good at every level. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. His 27 home runs didn't come in a lot of. He wasn't. He has not been here the whole year. 27 quick. That is slicing foul. He's got so much power. This is such a good park for him. He can just flip it out of here in the left. And that right field wall is pretty inviting for a guy like Jordan as well. Absolutely. But again, in a regular season, you can't pitch the way they're pitching against the Astros. You just can't. You can't use that many resources each game. You wouldn't last the season. And they've been able to do that here in the postseason and really frustrate him, especially the Rays. He had a nice series against the Rays, but they used a lot of pitchers against him as well. Now a 2 2. Sessa trying to keep it right where it is. 3 2 Houston as we play in the fourth inning of game six. Strikeout ends the fourth. And Alvarez now one for 21. Torres will lead it off when we come back. Fifth inning. Yankees down one.
save you 15% or more on car insurance. And is sponsored by Motherless Brooklyn in theaters everywhere November 1st, rated R. And by T-Mobile, their newest, most powerful signal is here. Zayer Keedy back to the mound, and that breaking ball misses outside to Glaber Torres. Torres, Hicks, and Carnacion. If you're Aaron Boone, you are thrilled you're in this position after the first inning. One run down, and your offense has a chance to keep you in this game and obviously take the lead. So down 3 nothing after the first. Crowd went crazy. Now only down one. Left side. The big hop for the third baseman Bregman went away. Rikidi gets the difficult Torres on a 2 0 pitch. They led 3 to nothing in the first, and the Astros 50 and 0 at home this season with a lead of three or more runs. 3 0 after one, 3 to 1 after an inning and a half, 3 to 2 after the home run by Urshela in the fourth. Here's Hicks. Strike one. Well, one thing about the Astros, besides how good they were, they were pushed hard by the Rays, getting up two games to none and then going to a game five where Garrett Cole got them to this point. But if you're A.J. Hitch, this game is so important because a it avoids the game seven allows Cole to start game one and then you can back it up with Verlander game two. And at some point I said we we're going to have this game anyway so it's supposed to be game four but it just so happens to be game six where the bullpens are going to be used like they have. Well, it's pretty amazing the swings in the at bats that Hicks is getting after not seeing Major League pitching from the beginning of August on. And he's gotten better and better and better. It's worked a couple of walks in key spots, hit the three run home run last night in the first inning of game five. Marcus Tim's the hitting coach, has to be thrilled with what he's seeing as he spoils that pitch. He's gone from not on the division series roster to maybe a pinch hitter to into the lineup bottom part to now the cleanup hitter with his Yankees facing elimination here tonight. One two pitch changed up on him two out. Strikeout number three for Urquidy. Tomorrow, a huge doubleheader on Fox, highlighted by America's Game of the Week. The five and one Saints rolling, facing Khalil Mack and the Bears. Let's don't miss Rob Gronkowski as he joins the guys on Fox NFL Sunday. Check local listings for the game in your area, or catch it on the Fox Sports app. Here's a grounder. Foul outside third by Encarnacion. Well, changeups are what get Hicks as well, and this is another great changeup. He turns it over, see the movement away. It's like a mini screwball where you're, you're turning the baseball over. It goes the opposite way of a slider for right handers.
the catcher held it there. But the count's two and two. He wanted the change up down and in, up down over the plate. He almost got it back door. Pulled this one, and when you pull it, it doesn't have the movement we saw earlier that fades away from a lefty into a righty. Eight straight years of 30 plus home runs for Encarnacion. Who gets time at the plate. Oh for one tonight. Oh for two. And Arcidi is through two. Having allowed one run. He has struck out four. Three two Astros halfway through game six. Houston, Texas, home of the Astros. There's nothing better than October baseball. Give MLB a follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube to keep up to date on all the postseason drama. Here's Maldonado. Looked like he was almost willing to drop that elbow into the path of that pitch from Luis Sessa took a ball. Maldonado, Reddick, Springer for the Astros up by one in the game and up by one in the series. <laughs> Only fitting we would have this score between these two great teams. It hasn't been a perfectly played series by the Yankees but they have battled and were a play or a hit away from ultimately changing this series. Here's a bunt. Maldonado got him at first on a good play by Sanchez. And Maldonado says check the replay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that one's going to be at least reviewed right there. I think he might have been safe live. That was just one extra second. Sanchez with a cannon took his one extra second. Watch here. Just a little too long. We're lying on that. 
I think he's going to be safe. I do too. Oh yes. And everybody in the park knows it right now because they just played it on the scoreboard. See, he needed to pick that up. I know he's thinking that Maldonado, his counterpart catcher, cannot run that well. But as he goes and bears hands that, he has to make one fluid motion to throw to first. And he's going to be safe on a base hit. Replay review is powered by Mitel. And like Tom Berenger dropping one down at the end of the movie Major League, Martin Maldonado legs out a bunt base hit to start the fifth. That'll bring in Josh Reddick. We know AJ's hoping for some more space between a one run lead with. Strike one. Kitty being the guy that he would like to get three more outs out of, ideally, three more outs, and then he can go to his leverage part of the bullpen. Guys, one into center for Hicks. Maldonado back to first. Tom, this is such a smart play by Maldonado. That's his first bunt hit since 2016. We talked earlier in the series, Joe, about how deep the Yankees play. There's no way they were expecting a bunt. And actually, he was helped out by how wet the dirt is in front of home plate. Took some of the steam out of that bunt. And so Maldonado legged it out. Sanchez knew it, even though the initial call was out. His reaction, he knew Maldonado beat the throw. Now Springer. Reddick upset. He missed his pitch. Strike one on Springer. George has hit 49 home runs on the year. 41 rather, 39 plus two. He's got four RBIs in this series. That's down and away. One ball, one strike. He's such a big part of the offense and how he's redefined leadoff hitters. Basically, when he steps up, steps up to the plate to lead off a game, he's got a chance to put a point on the board right away, and he just does that quite often. That miss down and in. It's a one run game in game six of the ALCS. We're in the middle innings, and the two pitchers. Sessa and Urquidy. One guy wearing number 85, the other guy wearing number 65. Oh. If Springer doesn't get hurt in the first half, we're talking about him potentially winning the MVP. He was having a monster first half. Hamstring. Got him and they're just glad he's back. Second half, he was able to get back and get back in rhythm. Talk about those home runs he hit on the year. He was on a torrid stretch. Dangerous pitch here for Sessa. Foul back as Springer tried to launch it out of here. Because he gets a little big sometimes trying to hit it over the train. That will happen and the swing and miss will come into play.
Hard hit. Urshela out at second. Got them both. Well turned by Urshela and Torres, and that sends game six into the sixth. And the lead is still one for Houston. how October would unfold in the MLB postseason bracket challenge presented by MGM Resorts with two hundred fifty thousand dollars on the line less than three thousand brackets remain perfect. Burkitti's been good. Astros ask for more top of the sixth inning three two Houston game six. The fools. Didi Gregorius in two quick strikes to start the inning. Didi's been off his game a little bit. He came up with two situations, bases loaded twice, and both times on breaking balls, grounded out. Sanchez will follow then Urshela. Boy, Urquidy is settling in now. He struck out three in a row. And retired six straight. Change up again. Perfectly thrown. We'll give you more on Urquidy here in a moment when we get a chance to go down to Ken Rosenthal. But first. It's Gary Sanchez. Ball one. Kenny, this is another find for Jeff Luno and company. It is purchased from the Mexican Leagues in 2015. Urquidy was available to any team for $50,000 in the Rule 5 draft last offseason after the Astros did not protect him on their 40 man roster. 
Now, for the Astros, it was a calculated risk. Rikidi returned from Tommy John surgery in the second half of last season, but he only pitched an A ball. Pitched well, but only an A ball. So teams didn't see him all that often, and they didn't see him at a high enough level to risk a major league roster spot on him. Well, now, after another season of continued progress, he projects as a likely member of their 2020 rotation. Garrett Cole's a free agent, and so is Wade Miley. Two and one now the count on Gary Sanchez and there's been a spike in velocity for Urquidy in 2019 as well as he gets stronger and healthier after the operation Two one pitch is down three and one Urshela who homered his last time up is on deck. Even though he's beaten Sanchez on some fastballs, he's got to be very careful with a 3 1 fastball. And he walks him. So Sanchez is on with one out, and here comes Urshela. Statcast is powered by AWS. Here's what Urshela did against Urquidy in the fourth. Picked down a fastball, used the velocity, went the other way. And now after the walk, Brent Strom, the pitching coach, will come out and talk to Urquidy. Gio Urshela, when he went deep in that fourth inning, became the first Yankee to hit two or more home runs out of the number eight spot in the lineup in a postseason since. Aaron Boone back in 2003 and he was the hero for the Yankees in game seven of the ALCS with a home run off Tim Wakefield to send the Yankees to a World Series. Well what was so impressive about that home run obviously a where he hit it. But he was the best on inside pitches as far as home runs go. In baseball Urshela. Now there's action in both bullpens as Urshela represents the go ahead run at the plate. <laughs> Strike one on a first pitch changeup. Sliders and changeups off of right handers typically where most will go to try to get out Urshela. Will Harris getting loose. That's going to drop into right center field. Sanchez will hold at second. It's two on one out. And Urshela is on base for the third time in the ballgame. The bottom of the order continues to crank here for the Yankees. And with Harris getting ready in a hurry, you've got. Gardner coming up D.J. LeMahieu on deck. This is turning into one of those high leverage situations that teams talk about. Yeah absolutely and. Again. All the pressures on New York but what New York wants to do is put added pressure on A.J. to make some decisions even though he knows he's got Garrett Cole in his back pocket for tomorrow. Really doesn't want to get to a game seven. There's a strike to Gardner. Now the Yankee hitters are seeing Urquidy for the second time. Gardner almost hit a home run to right against Urquidy back in the fourth and then served a base hit into left. So he's one for two. Always be careful when you're throwing your sliders on that down and in slider to left handers, especially to Gardner. That's on a line to right. Reddick with a diving catch. For out number two. Well, we've 
seen Aaron Judge make some great plays in right field. This, under the circumstances, with top spin and going down, may be the biggest play for the Houston Astros so far in this series defensively. Out number two. Two men on. Pitching change. Urquidy is out. Harris is coming in. LeMayhew's coming up. Two on and one out in a one run game to keep the score 3 2 Houston. And now with two on and two out, Will Harris comes in to take on DJ LeMahieu. Reddick's going to have to be on his toes with LeMahieu if he gets a fastball to hit. Likes going that way. Chops one to short. Correa throws to get. Throws one pitch and gets out of the jam in the sixth. And the Yankees are now one for six with runners in scoring position and still trailing by one.
Carlos Correa charged the ball from short to end the top of the sixth inning. Strand two. Yankees have left eight. Astros lead by one. Bottom of the sixth. And the two, three, and four hitters for the Astros who have not scored since the first. And Tommy Canely takes over the hard throwing right hander. Fourth pitcher now for New York. Well, he's been pretty good for the Yankees. Used a lot. Canley's appearing for the fifth time in this LCS. Four and two thirds innings pitched. He's allowed only one hit. Tom Perducci. Well, believe it or not, this is the first time all season that Aaron Boone has used a relief pitcher three consecutive days. A tribute to the depth of that bullpen and how judicious he has been with their usage. He really limited the work, especially for his closer, Aroldis Chapman, from the first of September on. As they were pulling away in the AL East. That's up and away, three and one. Michael Brantley and now a quick word from Chevrolet Chevy Youth Baseball it's local Chevy dealers giving back because we're not just the official vehicle of Major League Baseball we're empowering the next generation of Major League hopefuls and a visit to the mound by Gary Sanchez McKinley was visibly frustrated he didn't get that 3 1 pitch. Talked about these guys, John, coming in at the start of the night. Core four out of that bullpen for New York during the course of the regular season and beyond. Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable when you think about what they've been able to do over 162 games, and really the only chink in the armor this postseason, Ottavino just hasn't been himself, and that's been reduced really to the three guys now for this this game and tomorrow if they play all four of those guys appeared over 60 times for Aaron Boone out of the Yankee pen Brantley hit 22 home runs during the regular season has won this postseason Whoa. takes a ball. It's amazing when you break down Michael Brantley and you look at every statistical category that's out there it usually starts with a three he's hitting 300 in almost every single category which is hard to do but speaks to how good he is with his back control September one of his best months slipped a little bit. Single and an opportunity for the Astros to add to their one run lead. And again, the growing theme it's the situation the Yankees have put themselves in ever since game two when they went short with Paxton. You get to see these relievers a lot, and it's just not 
typical to see a reliever this many times so you feel like the advantage starts going to the hitters. And right now the advantage goes to the Houston Astros on being able to add to their one run lead with first and third nobody out. If you're the Yankees you really got to get out of here with only one run. It's so hard as a pitcher to try. You try your best to get out of the inning without a run and in this situation you end up giving up a big crooked number. Give up the one. Don't give up the runner at first base. Don't let him cross home. Bregman. First and third nobody out. Woo! Takes the highest strike. I change up. Nothing he can do with it anyways. Didn't think it was a strike. Chop to short. Run scores. Out at second. Safe at first. It's 4-2. Is a great job. I know it looks like an out was made, but a run was scored. Put it in play. That's been the theme of the Houston Astros. It's why they put pressure on other teams. They did it to the Yankees in game four. The Yankees were not able to make plays. But for Canley, he will trade that out if he can keep this a two run game. Altuve, who led off of the walk, came around to score. That is the first RBI for Bregman in this LCS. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been on a team where I'm going, please hit into a double play, please hit into a double play. Because you knew you were going to score a run, even if you hit into a double play. Sometimes you get the strikeout, then the double play. That never works. In this case, they got the run producing contact play. for 20 when he stepped in with two on one out in the first inning. Popped one over the wall and left three nothing three to one three to two now four to two. And the RBI by Bregman. Really working hard with that change up and really kind of overthrowing it this can lane you can understand if he's just a little bit fatigued with the amount of work he's had in this series the Yankees and the Astros after playing last night both landed in the early morning hours tried to get some rest and then out to the ballpark for game six. Strike two. Nobody in the bullpen coming into this game and throw more pitches than Canely. He had 54 coming in. Green had 53. So the bullpen has had to work a lot harder than the Astros bullpen. Down to second, Bregman with two away.
Want more playoff stats? Hey Siri, who's leading baseball in home runs in the playoffs? With Bregman at second and two down, here's Correa. He's had a flair for the dramatic. Wearing the home whites postseason here at Minute Maid Park. He won game two with an 11th inning opposite field home run. Takes a strike hey. here with Bregman in scoring position and two down. Well, you, you mentioned how many times the Yankee relievers had not gone three in a row for them to win this series they needed Chapman to pitch in three in a row he pitched last night and ideally they needed to pitch tonight and tomorrow in a winning formula Canely didn't get that call. Count one and one on Correa. Speculating after game five last night who the two starters would be for game six. These two managers, AJ Hinge on the left, Aaron Boone on the right, are good friends. They texted one another at about 12:30 this morning. Boone knew that Peacock was starting for Houston, and Hinch knew that Chad Green was starting for the Yankees. Seen a total of nine pitchers in this game six so far. There will be more. Runner going, and after Bregman got a great jump and could have the second half of that trip to third and walked into the bag, he has to go back two strikes on the hitter. Huge jump. And they were going to give it to him no matter what. Michelle is playing back with two outs. A good idea really for Bregman to get over there. We've already seen between the pass balls and wild pitches on the Yankees the pressure that would have if Bregman were at third base. Instead, they still get the inning going on a strikeout that gets squirts by Sanchez. The change up, down, and he just missed it. That's back to back games with a pass ball for Gary Sanchez. He had limited those. A big number of previous two years 16 and 18 pass ball seven during the regular season this year but now back to back ALCS games with a pass ball and it's first and third for Jordan Alvarez.
The rookie is one for 21 in this ALCS. Every changeup's like Canely, but Alvarez has had a lot of success against right-handed changeups on the year. Jordan Alvarez trying to bust out of a slump, almost hit. Two and zero oh in a new baseball for Tommy Canely. Again, just overthrowing it. The changeup. Here comes Larry Rothschild. And that's a great mound visit, too, just to reset his brain a little bit. I'm sure he's working on a little bit of fumes. And when you're a little bit tired, you try to generate too much with your body and not trust the freedom that you have when you throw two days in a row or once every three days. Tyler Lyons is a lefty in the bullpen. They stick with Canely after the strikeout and the pass ball. Well, everybody resets. Just a reminder the World Series begins on Fox Tuesday at 7 30. And it will either happen here in Houston or in the Bronx. The Washington Nationals making their first World Series. Canley's lower half is so strong, that's why he can do what he does. But when it gets a little fatigued, you start leaning or leaking towards home too fast, and your mechanics get a little out of whack. There goes Correa, and he steals second without a throw. That is Correa's first steal of this postseason. Now a hit could mean two. Two one pitch. Two and two nasty delivery down and in. And that's the best one he's thrown. So whatever Rothschild told him either stay back and trust your. Pitches don't force them. Perfect timing. Best one he's thrown. Asking for a big hit out of their rookie DH. A strikeout ends the inning. And the struggles continue for Alvarez just shaking his head at the plate. The Astros get their first run since the first, lead by two after six in game six.
one. Tonight's aerial coverage is sponsored by Budweiser. Warm day in Houston, Texas. Drama inside Minute Maid Park. As Aaron Judge hammers at the first pitch from Will Harris, underway in the seventh. The Astros lead now back to two. Yeah, it's been a really good game, and for AJ, he's had a little less to worry about. Boone is going to guys and asking them to give him whatever he's got left in those arms. There's a strike from Harris. Nothing in two. Well, AJ Hinch got two and two thirds from Jose Urquidy. A run on three hits, five strikeouts, and a walk. He allowed the home run. That was the only real blemish. Those were big outs he got. They were huge. And that was a big inning for Canley, only giving up one. Off the end of the bat and off the glove of Correa. Judges on to start the inning. End of the bat, edge of the glove, base hit. Yankees put their leadoff man on. Well, he got up as high as he could, and you see the ball actually kind of hooking, and he gets right to the end of the glove and just can't make a look. This place would have gone crazy if he made that play. Instead, in steps the tying run, and Glaber Torres. Three home runs this postseason, one for three tonight. 4 2 ball game, seventh inning. Strike one. Up and away with fastballs, breaking balls over the middle of the plate. It's got a hit almost right on top of the plate. That's the one area Torres is a little vulnerable, otherwise, he gets to everything else. Vino, who has struggled getting ready as Torres was trying to launch. Now he's in the hole, nothing in two. Labor Torres gets under it, skies it in foul territory for Guriel. One down. Ten o'clock here in Houston, Texas. A game summary. Yuli Guriel with a three-run shot in the first. Gary Sanchez answered in the second with an RBI hit with two out up the middle. Urshela went deep in the fourth inning for. New York, but the Yankees have been playing catch up since Yuli Gurriel drove one over the wall and left for a three run shot in the first. He had been hitting into some hard luck. There was no hard luck there. Strike one on Aaron Hicks. Pete Macheska is our producer. Matt Gangle is our director. Tom Verducci and Kenny Rosenthal and John Smoltz. Joe Buck in what is a thrilling series and a heck of a game six so far. Hicks could tie it with one swing. 0 for 3, but he swung the bat well tonight. Takes in the dirt. I always felt the hardest position on the team was going to be game seven starter when you're up. So Garrett Cole is watching this game in a, in a kind of a strange way. He's got to prepare and watch and take in information. Obviously he's already faced him. But he'd rather pitch game one. So you can't get too emotionally involved in the game. Now on the flip side. Severino is begging to pitch game seven. So he's more engaged in the game. 
strike two on Hicks because he's down three games to two so two different ways each guy and of course he may have to pitch tonight who knows that's why he's down on the pen no guarantees when you're on the brink of elimination. Will Harris came on with two on two out last inning through one pitch to DJ LeMayhew got a chopper to short to end the inning. In this inning a leadoff hit a foul out now Hicks waits. For a one two pitch from Harris. Here in the seven. By the way, a reminder if the Yankees come back and force a game seven, we are on the air 6 30 Eastern, 3 30 Pacific on FS1 and the Fox Sports app for the decisive game seven tomorrow night. Garrett Cole and Luis Severino. The scheduled starters, if we get there, that's up to the Yankees and their bats at the moment. The 1 2. And all of Washington D.C. would love to see a game seven. I'm sure they would all tune in. Especially Davey Martinez <laughs> and the Nationals. As they sit and wait to see who and where they go. Two two pitch. Full count. Encarnacion on deck. So much to process. The hitter's trying to process all the information he's taken in on this pitcher. The pitcher's trying to process all the information. Little flat ball. That is trouble. Seventh, Michael Bradley step into the spotlight. Time to stretch, but they're already doing it in Houston.
And when we show you the replay, you're going to see being left handed might have exactly helped him make this play. Judge was in such an impossible no man's land. And when Brantley dove, Judge touched the base and tried to get back. Brantley made a good one hop throw. But being left handed, I think, coming in was about the only way he could make that play. And what a play. Yeah, right handed, he has to reach across his body with a backhand. And I'm with you. I think left handed allowed Brantley to have a chance, and then Brantley made the play. Zada Vino, his struggles well documented, misses outside one ball, one strike on Maldonado. He's been so good in his first year back home in New York working out of the Yankees' pen. He struggled the postseason as that breaking ball is hammered foul strike two. Fifth game for Adovino and ERA over 20, obviously limited work, and inning in the third. He's allowed six hits, four runs, three earned. After a really good year, part of this terrific Yankee bullpen. Trying to keep it 4 2. Good pitch for the strikeout to start the inning. Our dynamic play of the game brought to you by Hankook Tire. And trying to get back to the World Series for the second time in three years. That play could go a long way for the Astros here in game six. Yeah, he comes in and dives right at the last minute. And then at this point, he sees where Judge is. Judge tries to get in the way of the throw. And just a dynamic double play. Left field here is tricky because it's so short. And he was playing more over towards center, I believe, and that ball shallow look like to judge angles was definitely going to drop in. Josh Reddick made a diving catch of his own earlier in the ballgame. On a ball hit by Gardner in the sixth, leads it off. Rather bats with one out, nobody on, and fouls it away. Reddick is 0 for 2. 2 for 10 in this LCS. And trying to get on in front of Springer. Joe Smith, side arming right hander getting loose. Good tailing pitch from Adovino. Good life in the count one and two. Well, that's that pitch he worked on. That's the. He's added that when you think about this two seam fastball and the late life that it has, coupled with that breaking ball when he's on. That's why he's been so tough. The breaking ball just hasn't been on. It's rolled more than it's been biting. Now the infield swings around to the right for Reddick, who chops at it and fouls it right side. Tom, uh, how about that defense a moment ago? Oh man, I, I love the story AJ Hinch told us about Michael Brantley. Remember, his first year here in Houston, early in the season, AJ Hinch would take him off the field with a lead late in the game, in part because Jake Marisnik is such a good outfield defender. Michael Brantley went to his manager and said, you tell me what I need to do to improve to be a nine inning player. I don't want to come off the field. Is it my jumps? Is it my range? I'll do whatever it takes to be a nine inning player. Prideful, prideful man. Well, <laughs> it certainly has paid off. The two corner outfielders making two great diving plays. Brantley's just always been such a great hitter. So good for the Indians over the years. Just had a tough time lately staying healthy. 
was not a part of the Indians getting to within one win of winning at all in 2016. He was injured that year for the bulk of it. Reddick hits one down the line into the corner for Judge. And that is a foul ball. You get the sense with the way Judge reacted that that hit a girder out there on the roof here at Minute Maid Park. And then it dropped. And I'm interested to see where it dropped. Reddick still standing out there at second base. And there's some confusion now. Let's take another look. Oh, yeah. And then it comes down in foul territory. That's a foul ball. Yeah, it's live when it's hitting in fair and then where it ends up, foul. Kind of a break <laughs> for. Reddick, if you think about it, because Judge had that easily. Well, it's a break for Reddick in that he gets another chance. But then after that ricochet, had it fallen yeah. fair territory, he's standing on second. Instead, he's back to the plate. We count two balls, two strikes. With one out. Should be handled and is by LeMahieu. Empire wearing the mic tonight. Let's listen to sounds of the game. Hit the roof in fair territory, AJ, but it landed flat. Foul. Yeah, it's a strike and going to the ground, which is foul. That's Marvin Hudson, the home plate umpire, and once that ball hit foul, it's a foul ball. And no harm, no foul, as Reddick. Should have been an easy out on that fly ball to right, ends up grounding the first, and with two out here, Springer. Be nice for the Yankees to get Adovino to roll through this seventh. And then Encarnacion, Gregorius, and Sanchez will come to the plate. Springer to Gregorius. We'll see him in a minute with the bat in his hands. A one, two, three frame for Adovino. That has to feel good for the veteran right hander. Eighth inning. Game six. Astros up to
Uh, what would you like the power to do? And by Han Cook Tire. Chase down your passion, never halfway. Well, tonight's aerial coverage is sponsored by Budweiser. Game six goes into the eighth. And the side-arming right-hander Joe Smith deals a strike to Edwin Encarnacion. Sixth pitcher of the night for Houston. Peacock, James, Presley, Urquidy, Harris, Smith, strike two. 35-year-old right-hander Joe Smith started the year on the injured list, was coming back from a tear in his Achilles. And now here he is trying to set up closer Roberto Osuna, keep it a two-run game. He's one-third of the way there. Strikeout to start the eighth. And Encarnacion cannot get anything going at the plate. Yeah, it's just been amazing. And this is one of the best RBI and home run hitters. He's lost his stroke. The DHs have lost their strokes for both teams. This is the, really the only part of the lineup that's done much. And it was the part of the lineup six, seven, eight, nine that had done nothing coming into this game. Gregorius takes a ball. AJ Hintz talked about we got to find a way. We have to find a way to get LeMahieu out. He makes everything work. There's one in the left. Gregorius is on base for the second time tonight. Two for four and Ken Rosenthal he is a potential free agent to be D.D. Gregorius. He is Joe and he's going to be a rather interesting free agent a shortstop becoming a free agent as he turns 30 years old and as we know in this sport right now people don't trust players over 30 so shortstop is a young man's position that said he's been a valuable Yankee he's a leader on this team. And it's going to be really interesting to see whether they make him a qualifying offer which he could accept at 17.8 million or whether they just let him go. Well, he was the guy to take over the position vacated by the retired Derek Jeter and he has handled that brilliantly. He sure has no one could have envisioned him doing. what he did and right now the Yankees are one swing away from uh, injecting life back into their dugout and tying this ball game and they've got a home run hitting catcher in Sanchez who hit a career high 34 during the regular season won this postseason tying run at the plate that's a strike and the count evens to the surprise of Gary Sanchez. Yeah I'll tell you what a lot of players there's been a lot of pitches off the plate tonight. It's on both sides but that's just unhittable. There's no way a hitter can do anything and Gary's behind the plate and he knows what some of those calls have gone for and against him while he's catching his pitcher and while he's hitting at the plate. Gregorius aboard with one down. That is a strike and it's one and two. And now Gary's going to have to battle somehow some way with two strikes. He feels like the inner part of the plate has gotten too big so. Let's see what Joe Smith and Maldonado decide to do. Threat. Double play candidate. That's up two and two. his mask after not getting that call and says something to the home plate umpire Marvin Hudson and now Maldonado looking at his bench 
Well, that one was off too. If you're going to give a little bit on the inside, you can't give a little bit on the outside. You can't make the plate that wide. That's coming from a pitcher that wants it wide. <laughs> Three two to second. Altuve. Correa. Double play. The Astros. Three defensive outs away from their second World Series in three years. Get a double play in the seventh. And get a double play in the eighth and lead this thrilling game six by two. Two, three, four hitters for the Astros. Altuve, who has been right in the middle of both rallies for the Astros. No surprise there. Will face Zach Britton. And I didn't think this place could get any louder, but it's louder. They're smelling it. They're hoping they can watch football tomorrow and have a day off. Altuve has been on base twice with a double, a walk, he scored twice. Bounces it off the plate, foul for strike one. In the ninth inning, if it stays as is, the Yankees will need only one base runner to have a chance, and they will have Urshela, Gardner, LeMahieu, and if anybody gets on, Aaron Judge. Closer Osuna ready to go. Strike two on Altuve. And again, all things considered, the Yankees have played an unbelievable game. When you, you spot the other team at home in an elimination game, three runs early, Aaron Boone had to go to the bullpen. He had gone to the bullpen this entire postseason. It's the strength of his ball club. But you got to give him credit for keeping the game right there within striking distance. Now Britain wants to do the same thing. 0 2. 
Seller and Boone, the 46 year old second year manager, first manager in Major League Baseball history, first two years guiding a team winning 100 or more games. Urshela. One up. MLB's RBI program is designed to provide youth in underserved communities opportunities to play baseball and softball. For more information, visit MLB.com slash RBI. Here's Michael Brantley, who grew up in the game. His dad, Mickey, played for the Mariners back in the late 80s. And he turned in one of the biggest defensive plays, not just tonight, not just in this series, but in recent memory, in an elimination game. Diving catch through behind Judge, doubled him off first in the seventh. Ball one outside. No disrespect to the rest of the American League. There's been some really good teams. The Rays had a good year. The A's had a great year. The Twins had a great year. But these were the best two teams throughout the year, and they have played to a battle here. And they're so close in every single category. When you think about how the strength of each club has kind of been orchestrated, pitching, starting pitching, of course. For the Houston Astros, their one two combination, I don't know if it gets any better. I know, by the way, they added Grinky. And for the Yankees, their starting pitching, by the way, wasn't bad. They just didn't have the depth or the innings because their, their bullpen was so good. And when you think about how this series turned and was won, in my opinion, it was the little things that the Houston Astros were able to do that the New York Yankees weren't. And I'm talking about minute things. Putting the ball in play, running the bases, and now we've seen in this game making some incredible defensive plays. So they did a little bit more than what the Yankees were able to do to flex their muscles in this series. But three big outs remain. And the Yankees, who were number two in baseball with 306 home runs on the year need just one guy to reach yep. to be one swing away as it stands right now from tying this ball game. That is how dangerous they have been with that home run. 3 1 pitch now is inside. Brantley draws a one out walk. Hits have been scarce and hits with runners in scoring position in this series have been hard to come by and how about the defense that you mentioned diving catch Reddick diving catch at the front end of a double play by Brantley and left and then moments ago this double play turned by Altuve and the fastball to first by Correa. Yeah it's been outstanding coming into this game. The home runs the biggest story right as they get a pinch runner for Brantley. The Yankees had gotten all their runs in this series, all but one coming into this game via the home run. The bases loaded walk by Gardner was the other run until this game. Jake Marisnik comes in to run at first. And he draws the throw. And all I can think about is Tom Verducci's report about. Michael Brantley saying to A.J. Hinch, what do I need to do to be a nine inning defensive player? <laughs> he's made the play of the game, the play of the series, and he's still out of the ball game with Marisnik about to take over in center. That'll move Springer. And that'll move Reddick. Marisnik draws another throw. During the regular season, Jake Marisnik stole 10 bases, was caught three times. And we'll see how the Astros want to play it with their cleanup man, Alex Bregman, at the plate. Big lead.
Ball one. Bregman got his first RBI of this series in the sixth, his last at bat. As he bounced to short for a force out at second. In the air to right, Judge came in and now has to reach high to get out number two. Back to first, Marisnik with Guriel coming up. He can do it all defense, offense. Hopefully next year he can stay healthy and put up the sky's the limit what he could do if he stays healthy. Spent two months on the injured list with a strained left oblique. Did Aaron Judge but still managed to hit 27 home runs. Here's Guriel. That ball is going to get down. Good play by Judge. He just saved a run. Unbelievable play. The, the, the difficulty of this play is so much harder than you could tell on TV. At his height, this ball was hit on a line, and it's by him. That ball's by him. And the hop and where he put his glove, just enough right to knock it down into that big frame. This is this is not that easy of a play. Wow. Reminiscent of the play that the Milwaukee Brewers didn't make in right field on that ball hit by Juan Soto in a playoff game. And that wild card play in game that sent the Nationals into that matchup against the Dodgers. Judge able to keep it. And Marisnik could not come to the plate. Now a ball in the dirt and with a runner at third. We've seen back to back games with pass balls by Gary Sanchez. He's able to corral that pitch. You almost wonder if the Yankees were to have the lead right here, would they have put Romine in? But being down and trying to work the lineup and keep the game going, you could also use that bat in the lineup if you're able to tie it up. First and third, two out. Carlos Correa. No, no. Two and oh. This is where Correa has been so much better. Empty. Bases not so much. Men on, he lights up. Runners in scoring position so far, much better in the playoffs. The base is open, albeit second base, and the left handed hitting rookie Alvarez on deck. Here comes a 2 0 pitch. Say Correa went around. And they count two and one. This ball moved a foot. And it was so far outside that Correa, when it came out of Britain's hand, thought, oh yeah, no. Britain trying to keep it a two-run game.
Does he challenge Correa with a count of three and one or does he not mind putting him on and pitching to Jordan Alvarez. Two out. Correa oh. takes a walk. And Alvarez is going to be lifted for a pinch hitter. Aledmus Diaz. Don Alvarez one for 22 without an RBI in this series. And A.J. Hinch goes to his bench and he calls on Diaz to try to add to a two run lead. Rolled as Chapman gets up. He has another nice piece added by Jeff Luno the general manager can play all over has some pop hit 271 nine home runs hitless in this series and he takes a ball 0 for six this postseason no RBIs written a little bit forcing that sinker again talking about how many times you're up how many times you get hot how many times you get in a series it takes its toll. I know the season was spread out for these guys but in a condensed series. No one understands until you've been down there what that's like when you have to get up multiple times and used in high leverage situations so at times you just force it. When all the other times it's natural. Ledmus Diaz, who was an all star in his rookie season in the big leagues at St. Louis in 2016 when he hit 300 with 17 home runs and 28 doubles. And we haven't seen the breaking ball out of Britain. It's been all sinkers. Two and zero oh instead of one and one as they appealed to the crew chief Mike Everett. Whoa! Sure looked like he went around. Britain has to come to him now. Two zero -oh pitch. See if you try to hit that sinker with your body and don't trust your hands and then you're going to look like that a lot. It just again sitting at home watching it on TV you cannot do the justice of how much movement and the velocity and the decision of how quickly you have to decide if that's a strike or not. That's what makes Britain such a ground ball specialist and one of the best closers in the game before his injury. Two one. Two and two. Shortstop Gregorius. Good job by Britain. Astros leave the bases loaded, have stranded six in the ball game. We have played eight. Last chance for the Yankees. Down by two, facing elimination here in Houston.
Roberto Osuna taking over, trying to close it out. Yankees needing two to tie. First up, Urshela. He's been on base three times tonight. Seventh game this postseason for Osuna. He has one save. It came in game three. Chased. One ball, one strike. Everybody moves in the outfield as Reddick goes from right to left. Marisnik, who pinch ran, stays in the game, plays center, and that moves Springer to right. A 1 1. That's a base hit. And the Yankees have life on base for the fourth time tonight is Urshela. A sharp single. And that will bring in Brett Gardner. Well, they swung at a 1 0 pitch out of the zone. And they tried to come right back in the high fastball, and he pulled it in the hole for the biggest. Opportunity for the Yankees. They had to get somebody on base. Tension in the stands. You can already tell they were standing cheering and it went into like a murmur. Second time over the last three innings, the Yankees have put their leadoff man on. Here's Gardner. He is singled, struck out, lined out. Takes a strike. Woo! You know, Aaron Boone and his. Infamous argue with the home plate umpire said that my guys are savages. What they are, are grinders, and they grind out at bats, and they make the other pitcher have to be really, really good to get them out. It's not been the perfect series for the Yankees offensively, but Gardner spins out of there. And think about how we came on the air. Nobody knew what was in store. You never do, but a bullpen game on each side. Question is, Gardner is wondering if that ball hit the sleeve. And they're going to look at it. Didn't have glanced off his hands. Uh, he wasn't sure, and it's worth taking a look, but that's about as close as it comes to seeing if it hits you. It's worth the it's worth the review. But haven't seen anything yet that looks like it glanced. Sleeve the arm of the hand. Replay review is powered by Mitel. But nobody knew what was to come in this bullpen game. We've seen a total of 13 pitchers for the most part. All effective. Yeah. A it's two, a two run game. Yeah, a two out, three run homer. One mistake. And that held up so far with a run added by the Astros. To that two run game you're talking about, Joe. And I'll tell you what, I mean, this Yankee offense did absolutely everything it had to do from the, from the six through nine. They provided this point to where they have a chance. Gardner stays at the plate with a 1 1 count. So a 1 ball, 1 strike count. Urshela on. DJ LeMay, he will follow, then judge. Gardner. Late. Strike two. This will be the most. Pitchers in a six game series in the American League. 66 pitchers were used. The most important one is on the mound right now for the Astros. Their seventh of the game. Roberto Osuna. A 1 2. Fouled away. Osuna was the American League leader in saves. 38. Just 24 years old and trying to come up with the last three outs before the Yankees can get two.
filthy changeup. Fastball, 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 and then he pulls the string. And a guy you know that's trying to go and fight the fastball off and maybe hit it the other way. Great pitch. DJ LeMayhew. 0 for 4 in this game came in hitting 381 in this ALCS. Over the first five. That's outside ball one. This series has been everything that I thought it would be when you think about the run score the Astros have scored 20 in the series the Yankees 19. Chase did it 98 up and out of the strike zone one ball one strike. Barring a double play, Judge will come up. Off the mask. Maldonado. Strike two. Strike pitch just offside the plate. Fitter Shella, Gardner struck out. Mayhew trying to battle his way on. What a year. Number two in the American League with his 327 average, former batting champ in the NL with the Rockies. Also hit 26 home runs. Has two more this postseason. That pitch. Change up from Roberto Osuna. Change up there, floated a little bit, trying to get him off the fastball. And as I mentioned with LeMayu, his fastball, only 19% of them does he put it to the pull side off of fastballs. Tries to stay up the middle, tries to go to right, right center. Hoping he would pull off and ground that change up to the left side for a possible double play. 2 2.
That's high and a full count. Got to be real confident if you're going to go up there that you can make a 3 2 pitch because the chance of success for getting a strike at the top part of the zone with Omeyu is not great. So you have to have in your mind that you know you're going to throw the 3 2 pitch if you miss with the 2 2. Mayhew added as a free agent. Yankees front office didn't know exactly where he would play. He can play all over. He's been anchored at first base, and all he's done in a Yankee uniform is hit. 3 2 pitch. Fly ball into right. Back at the wall. This ball is gone for a home run. And this game is tied. Run Mayhew in ninth inning, game six, hero for the Yankees. It's 4 4. And right field it is. Didn't love the 2 2 pitch, had to come in there in the 3 2 pitch. And LeMayhew just outside of the glove of Springer. I mean, this is going to be as close as it gets when we see a replay. That gets away from Maldonado. Ball one to judge. Wow. Golly. Fans stayed back, let Springer have a crack at it, and he just couldn't get there. I'm telling you, 2 2 pitch. Big swing by Judge. One ball, one strike, and after all this pitching and all the changes and the opener and everything else, A.J. Hinch has his closer in the game, and a blown save is the result. We'll see who wins the ball game. Big delivery by LeMayhew. There's a strike to judge, and it's one and two. The hardest part of a closer is when the adrenaline and the letdown of blowing the save, you have to take a breath and keep the game tied. You cannot let that momentum carry over because the games, you're not losing. You just didn't get the job done. You got to keep the game going. Now a one two pitch. Wouldn't chase it. The Yankees have Chapman ready to go. I saw that shot of Garrett Cole wondering if he'll pitch tomorrow in a game seven. Or on Tuesday in game one of the next round of the World Series. The Yankees now want to give Chapman a lead. That's out number two. Step Glaber Torres, the 22 year old who basically won game one with a five RBI ball game and a seven to nothing win here in Houston. Tonight, one for four. Bases empty, two out, strike one, and Torres was taking all the way or backing out of there for whatever reason. Wow, this place is done. High fly ball. Torres got under it. Reddick hauls it in. And it's DJ LeMayhew. What an addition for the Yankees. All he has done is hit. Just out of the reach of Springer and right, and game six is tied into the bottom of the ninth.
Don't forget this play by Aaron Judge in the bottom of the eighth. Kept that ball from getting behind him, saved a run. The lead was two until the shot by D.J. LeMayhew just out of the reach of George Springer in right. And game six is tied 4-4. Four, four. Bottom of the ninth inning and a roll as Chapman is into the ball game with Maldonado, Reddick, and Springer coming up. Maldonado one for three. A bunt hit back in the fifth, the only time he reached. What a game. Well, Chapman's going to be in there for at least two innings. And that's what his manager's hoping he can provide in relatively quick fashion. He hasn't had much work in the series. As I mentioned, if the Yankees are going to have any chance at winning this series, they had to have Chapman pitch three days in a row. That's a strike in its own, too. Talking to A.J. Hinch, he said one of the small pieces of last night's game, in which the Yankees won 4 to 1, was getting Chapman in that ball game. But he has had very little work. He's thrown a couple of innings. That's it. Sector Rondon, the right-hander, gets loose. Here's the 0-2. As Maldonado stays alive. Nothing and two on Martin Maldonado. Maldonado hit 12 home runs during the regular season. Added to this Astros team at the deadline from Chicago. A strikeout starts the bottom of the ninth. Right about now. All that adrenaline. Long night. Travel. Get to this point. Yankees are on fumes with their pen. Tied up 4-4. When does a little fatigue, if at all, factor in? Chapman all year allowed only three home runs. He's just hard to square up. It's to face a left hander Reddick. And her oldest Chapman steps off. Each side has used seven pitchers. Throwing that pitch a lot more, and that pitch has become so nasty. Chapman, known for his 100 plus miles an hour fastball, doesn't need that as he gets older and he's mixed in that breaking ball. Plenty, plenty still on his fastball. The 0 1 to Reddick. Nothing in two. This game goes to the 10th. The Yankees will have Hicks, Encarnacion, and Gregorius. Oh, 2 to Reddick. 
And took foul. See if that pitch and that swing brings in a fastball here out of Chapman up and away or out over the plate. Seen already a few breaking balls here with two strikes. Tip. up stay in play left side or Shella two down and in walks George Springer I would be shocked literally I think shocked if well not shocked I'd be surprised if first pitch fastball is right here but Chapman Got a good enough fastball to beat anybody, but you're talking about a guy who loves fastballs early in the count. And a guy who has 13 career postseason home runs, most in the Astros franchise history, and now a visit out to the mound. As they go over how they want to. Approach this at bat by George Springer. 0 for 3 tonight. Springer hit a game tying home run in game two. A three run shot at Yankee Stadium in game number four. He bats with two out, nobody on, tie game ninth inning, game six. And I say that despite the numbers he has against left handers breaking ball, but this is not your normal left hander that he's facing. I just think if you're up there, you're sitting fastball and looking to try and end this game and take this crowd to a new octave. Here's a first from Chapman. Slider starts the at bat and drills the inside corner strike one. Pitch number 13 of the inning. Two out, nobody on, Altuve on deck. I just wonder if Springer has the guts to sit on a breaking ball. 3-1. He threw him a bunch of breaking balls to that fastball right there. Hard to sit on a breaking ball 
off of Chapman. Here it comes. It's up. Down to first is Springer and Altuve will walk in. Well, you know he's never seen the first pitch he didn't like. Right behind Springer and his 13 postseason home runs is Jose Altuve with his 12. And he loves hitting here at home in Houston. Chapman trying to get him to send it into the tent. The stolen base is not out of the equation. Springer stole six. He has won this postseason. And the outfield's going to play as deep as they can to try and cut off any double. Great speed, as you mentioned at first. No doubles outfield with two outs. But something down in the corner would be trouble. First two not close to Altuve from Chapman. Riznik is on deck, so you still have a base open if you're Chapman and Sanchez. You can't forget about it. You cannot let this guy with the 2 0 count beat you. Altuve hey. takes a strike on a slider. Great pitch. Michael Brantley was taken out to add to the defense, so Riznik on deck, and that 2 0 pitch was a beauty from Chapman. It is anything but a walk off home run because nobody's leaving. And the little guy, 5'6, 168, with the heart of a lion, sends it over the wall and left for a pennant winning home run. Amazing. Yankees.
got back to a tie game with an amazing two run homer in the ninth inning. Altuve with a 2 1 count on him. No Brantley on deck. Chapman went after him and lost the battle. How many big hits, how many big home runs here at home for Jose Altuve in his time with the Astros? He is a hero tonight, and the Astros win this ALCS in six games. The final tonight is 6 4. Let's go down to Tom Perducci. I'm, I'm with Michael Brantley. Michael, the little man came up big again. You were watching. Take me through what you saw and your reaction. 